Eating disorders are serious conditions related to persistent eating behaviors that negatively impact your health, your emotions, and your ability to function in important areas of life. The most common eating disorders are anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Eating is an activity that is essential to survival and the body has many built-in mechanisms that will regulate appetite and eating. Eating patterns are normally influenced by many factors, environmental as well as biological and cultural as well. The cause of eating disorder has multiple factors, uh, can be influenced by all of those and is extremely complex. Normal eating is eating when you are hungry and actually stopping when you are full. It's sometimes eating too much and sometimes eating unhealthy foods. It's mostly choosing what you want to eat because that's what you feel like eating and not because you're depriving yourself. Normal eating is eating without guilt or shame because those things have actually no place in nutrition. It's having a good understanding of what you're putting into your body and how it will affect your mood, your health, and your overall well-being. Eating disorders are psychological conditions characterized by unhealthy, obsessive, or disordered eating habits. Eating disorders come with both emotional and physical symptoms and include anorexia nervosa, which is the voluntary starvation, bulimia nervosa, which is a binge eating condition followed by purging, and binge eating disorder, where the binge eating is not followed by purging. There are some other or unspecified eating disorders as disordered eating patterns that do not fit into any of those categories. Collectively, eating disorders involve eating that is outside the normal range, is accompanied by anxiety and guilt, and results in physiologic imbalances or medical conditions. Question number one. Is the following statement true or false? Normal eating ceases when the person eating feels satisfied. The correct answer is true. The normal eating will cease when the person eating feels satisfied and additionally normal eating does not occur unless the person feels hungry. Anorexia nervosa often simply called just anorexia, is an eating disorder characterized by an abnormally low body weight, an intense fear of gaining weight, and a distorted perception of weight. People with anorexia place a high value on controlling their weight and shape, and they are using extreme efforts that tend to significantly interfere with their lives. To prevent weight gain or to continue losing weight, people with anorexia usually severely restrict the amount of food they eat. They may control calorie intake by vomiting after eating or by misusing laxatives, diet aids, diuretics, or enemas. They may also try to lose weight by exercising excessively. So no matter how much weight is lost, the person continues to fear weight gain. Anorexia isn't really about food. It is in fact an extremely unhealthy and sometimes life-threatening way to try to cope with emotional problems. Anorexia nervosa usually begins around the time of puberty, but it can develop at any time. It is more common in females than males, but the males are less likely to seek treatment. Anorexia nervosa is thought to affect one in every 200 American women, and the figures concerning men are less reliable, but some statistics suggest that up to 10 million men in the USA will suffer from a form of an eating disorder at some point in their lives. Bulimorexia, on the other hand, is a syndrome in which the symptoms of both bulimia and anorexia nervosa are present. And this condition is characterized by distorted body image, excessive weight loss, and use of forced vomiting to compensate for periods of binge eating. The exact cause for anorexia is not known. There are a few factors that play a role, and those may be genetics. Um, certain changes will confer predisposition for developing the condition at some point in life. Um, environmental factors, uh, socio-cultural influences that project thinness as a desirable trait and peer pressure, which encourages associated behaviors. 
some psychological factors. Um, there can be a tendency toward depression and anxiety in the same individuals, a difficulty in handling stress or excessive worrying and feeling scared or doubtful about the future. Those that are perfectionists, um, they are setting strict demanding goals or standards. Being very emotionally restrained or having feelings of obsession and compulsion. For anorexia and nervosa to be diagnosed, a number of criteria need to be met. And there are three specific features of the disorder. And those are, the patient's weight is significantly low, less than the minimal normal or expected body mass, taking into account the individual's height and age. The client displays an intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat, and this fear does not usually improve even when the individual loses weight. The client also displays a distorted view of their body weight and shape, either feeling overweight all over or singling out specific areas as being too fat. There are a number of additional features that support the diagnosis. The individuals suffering from the condition may appear seriously underweight, report symptoms as, such as depression, withdrawal, and insomnia, and they may display obsessive compulsive tendencies. Anemia is usually present and electrolyte levels, especially potassium and sometimes sodiums, are often dangerously low. Deficiencies in serum proteins are reflected in low albumin, transferrin, and ferritin levels. Cardiac irregularities can be identified by electrocardiography, and bone densitometry studies are used to determine whether osteopenia is present, and if so, how severe it has become. Lab tests may also be helpful in diagnosis anorexia abnormalities in blood serum chemistry, a decreased level of white blood cells, a mild anemia, reduced levels of thyroid hormones, low bone density, and a slower than normal heart rate may all support the diagnosis of anorexia. In terms of categorizing the condition, anorexia can be seen as mild when the BMI falls under 17.5. It's seen as and defined as moderate when the BMI falls between 16 to um, 16.99, and it gets severe when the BMI is in the range of 15 to 15.99. Whenever the BMI falls below 15, then it is referred um, as extreme anorexia. Although the causes of anorexia nervosa are not always clear, Condition can be treated in ways that reflect the needs of each individual. The treatment plan uh, may be drawn up to include psychotherapy, medical care, monitoring, medication, or nutritional counseling. The clients may also be required to keep a food diary to become more aware of their triggers. Treatment of anorexia nervosa involves nutritional therapy, which is most critical initial, and in association with that, drug therapy, psychotherapy, and family counseling. Nutritional therapy should include um, the way to provide nourishing, nourishing meals, um, supplemental vitamins and minerals, intravenous fluids and electrolytes when needed, uh, tube feedings as well if needed, or total parental nutrition when the anorexia is uh, severe. Once the client's weight improves or it's stabilized, an outpatient treatment may begin. The therapy may be prescribed for individuals suffering from anorexia nervosa, either on a direct one-to-one -one basis or in a family group. A specific type of therapy commonly offered to sufferers is cognitive behavioral therapy, which will help the individual recognize that their thinking patterns may be unhelpful or distorted, thus helping them to change their belief systems over time. Family-based therapy called the Maudsley approach is an alternative in which parents take responsibility for feeding their adolescent children who suffer from anorexia. Eating disorders are often co-occurring with other illnesses such as depression or anxiety, in which case medication may be prescribed to alleviate the symptoms of one disorder and by doing that aiming for improving the person's overall well-being. Anorexia co-occurring with other um, disorders may be treated with antidepressants, mood stabilizers, or antipsychotic medication. Two of the main types of medication prescribed for anorexia sufferers 
are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are used to treat depression, and olanzapine, which is used to treat feelings of anxiety. SSRIs assist with increased serotonin levels that is connected to the mood and improving the mood. Zyprexa olanzapine can also be used to assist with weight gain and obsessive thinking in this type of clients. Let's look at some of the nursing diagnoses that you can use in an anorexia client. Um, once the presentation is done, I would like you to come back to this part of the presentation and try to write down some interventions that you can apply for those nursing diagnoses and have a, uh, an explanation and reasoning why will you do that. So we can use imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, as related to food restriction, emaciated appearance, signs and of a, a, a vitaminosis and electrolyte imbalance. Adult failure to thrive related to minimal consumption of food emaciation or amenorrhea. Disturbed body image related to unrealistic perception of body size. Question number two, is the following statement true or false? The goal of treatment for anorexia nervosa is for the client to gain a specific amount of weight. The answer is false. And the rationale for that is the goal of treatment for anorexia nervosa is for the client to develop normal eating patterns. This condition is a disturbed eating pattern. So my main goal will be to develop into my client normal eating patterns, not to gain a specific amount of weight. Those can be short-term or long-term uh, goals on the way, however, is not the main goal of the treatment. Bulimia nervosa is a condition that is characterized by a minimum of two episodes of secret food binges, which represent the rapid consumption of a large number of calories per week, followed by behaviors that intend to prevent weight gain. For the condition to be considered true bulimia, the abnormal eating pattern must have been persisted for at least six months. There are two different manifestations um, of bulimia. The first one will be a client that is binging followed by purging, elimination of nutrients by using self-induced vomiting or laxatives, enemas or diuretics. Or you may have the client that is binging followed by fasting or using diet pills or engaging in excessive exercise. In other words, you may have one client that is binging and is preventing the absorption of the nutrients by immediately or as quick as possible eliminating, purging themselves. Or you may have the client that is not performing that but is aware of the amount of calories that they are ingesting and they are trying to um, overcome the high amounts of calories ingested by fasting or using uh, diet pills kind of or extreme exercise to burn out those calories that were absorbed. So in contrast to clients with anorexia, the clients with bulimia are generally older at the onset of the disorder. They're, they are usually normal weight or a little bit overweight sometimes. They admit on the other hand, that their eating behavior is abnormal, while the anorexia patients most of the times will not. And in addition to that, the, uh, the bulimia patients are ashamed of their habitually binging and purging. Now, there are two neurohormones, and they are called orexin A and orexin B, after the Greek word orexis, that means appetite. Um, and since we have discovered those, um, it started a development of a theory of, of a hypothesis that the levels of orexin A and B may contribute to binge eating and obesity in humans. Now there is another um, uh, substance that was discovered that is called leptin and leptin is manufactured in the human fat cells and it's believed to suppress the orexigenic, the appetite stimulating chemicals. Therefore, Binge eating may occur in the absence of leptin or reduced receptors for leptin. Now, whatever the cause, once a binge begins, it is very difficult to control. And during a binge, 
the clients with bulimia may consume between 3,500 to over 11,000 calories of food in two hours or less. And there are a few mechanisms that will stop the eating. The eating will stop when they develop abdominal pain. They may be interrupted. They are discovered by someone or because they need to sleep. After this eating frenzy, the bulimics will feel so guilty that they will purge or exercise or fast or abstain from food, uh, but not for days on the end. Um, as the, this fasting for days in a, in a row is characteristic for the combination of bulimia and anorexia, for bulimorexia. Now, as a result of a repetitive regurgitation of gastric acids due to self-induced vomiting and use of emetics such as epicoc, those will cause pharyngeal irritation and damage to the teeth by eroding the dental enamel by the, uh, by the acid. The abuse of laxatives and enemas will contribute in the development of what is called habitual constipation um, as a reaction to laxatives and enemas. The non-prescribed use of diuretics and diet pills will predispose them to all kinds of um, fluid and electrolytes and, as a result of that, cardiac issues. Some people with bulimia also will compulsively abuse drugs and alcohol. The shame and the guilt may trigger suicidal thoughts or even attempts. Clients with bulimia tend to be of normal weight or slightly overweight. However, their weight can fluctuate as much as 10 pounds in a week. Self-induced vomiting results in hoarseness and inflammation of the esophagus and the oropharynx. Um, when examining them, we can found um, calluses on the back of the hands and fingers from repeatedly stimulating the gag reflex. There will be, again, erosion of the tooth enamel from the acid, and um, they may complain or show up with swollen parotid glands. The diagnosis is based on the clinical findings and the history of persistent binging and purging. Serum electrolytes may be altered depending on the time that has elapsed since the last purge. We can perform an x-ray of the upper gastrointestinal tract and we may observe and notice either an overstretched or stenotic esophagus due to the uh, um, huge amount and frequent regurgitations and inflammations uh, that will be followed by the scarring of the tissues in those areas. How do we treat this kind of patient? So what we can do is to um, help them with antidepressants. Uh, we can add therapy, counseling, uh, medication and nutrition education. Antidepressants can be very helpful. Uh, behavioral therapy can alter the habits and the cognitive therapy may help them change their underlying negative thoughts associated. Once again, let's look, let's take a look at the nursing diagnosis um, that we have on the slide. And once done with this presentation, please come back to this slide as well and develop a few nursing interventions. So as diagnosis, we have imbalanced nutrition, more than body requirements related to compulsion to binge. Another nursing diagnosis is impaired dentition related to repeated contact with gastric acid secondary to chronic vomiting. Third one, ineffective coping related to managing guilty feelings by purging. The fourth one, situational low self-esteem related to poor impulse control and ineffective methods to control weight. Question number three, is the following statement true or false? One of the signs of possible bulimia is the development of calluses on the back of the hands and fingers. The statement is true, and the rationale, one of the signs of possible bulimia is the development of calluses on the back of the hand and fingers from intensive self-induced and of vomiting. Calluses usually do not develop on the back of the hands, but on the palm of the hands as a result of physical work. Binge eating disorder is characterized as the inability to control overeating accompanied by guilty feelings. However, people do not engage in compensating behaviors to prevent weight gain. 
Compulsive overeating is characterized as eating in the absence of hunger or regardless of feeling full. Some people have both problems simultaneously. Either of them may result in obesity with all of its consequences. The cause of overeating syndrome is still unknown. Um, something that um, there is a form of addiction in which the food is the drug of choice. Because people with eating disorders suffer from anxiety and depression and compulsive behavior, there's a growing evidence that biochemical factors are also involved in binge eating and compulsive overeating. So overeaters are typically overweight and have a history of unsuccessful attempts of dieting. Uh, those clients tend to eat in solitary in the absence of hunger, and they have preferences for high sugar and high fat foods um, that they may nibble over for several hours or gorge or un until they have feel uncomfortably full. But what do they don't do? They do not purge. Some report that they overeat or binge when they are angry, sad, bored, or anxious. Ultimately, overeating leads to many physical and emotional problems. As a consequence of obesity, many people develop hyperlipidemia, which is elevated blood fat levels, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, degenerative arthritis, and sleep apnea. There is a higher risk of gallbladder disease, heart disease, and some types of cancers in those type of patients. Many people feel unhappy, ashamed, and disgusted with themselves even. They tend to become socially isolated to avoid being noticed and possibly rejected. Clients with overeating syndromes generally have a BMI of 30 or higher. Other lab and diagnostic tests will reflect secondary complications from obesity, such as elevated blood sugar and cholesterol and serum lipid levels. A comprehensive approach to treating overeating syndromes invo involves beside weight reduction, psychotherapy, and self-help support groups. The first step is always a sensible weight loss regimen prescribed by a dietitian. Strict dieting is discouraged because it tends to worse binge eating. Overeating clients often have a history of other compulsive behaviors such as alcohol or drug abuse. Some reveal that they have considered suicide or have performed self-mutilation such as cutting and burning themselves, pulling their hair and interfering with wound healing to cope with their intense feelings in order to punish themselves or to experience physical pain to counteract the consequences of feeling emotionally numb. Please make a note and understand that bariatric surgery is not indicating, indicated in patients with psychological eating disorders.